love to live a life where you can look at certain things in your life and you can look at certain uh, situations in your life and you could differentiate between truth and lies. Anybody would like that? When you could look at uh, what is happening in your life and you would be able to distinguish um, what is the truth here and what is the lie here? Either it is someone that is not being truthful in a situation. Maybe it is a lie that you are believing about yourself that has been spoken over you. Uh, but you are able to distinguish. The, 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 the world we live in today, there's a lot of, uh, as they call, misinformation, disinformation. There's a new one I heard, malinformation. I don't really know what that means. Uh, but there's a lot of things that appear as truth but are not. There's a lot of things that appear as truth, and basically everybody that has a platform, and it's so easy to have a platform these days, um, can present something as truth on a, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a macro scale, but also in your own life, in the, in the, in the day-to-day things. That you and I are being bombarded with things that appear as truth, but are actually not. And we understand that the truth of anything is found in the Word. That is the basis of our lives. That is the, that is the plumb line that we use on how to build our lives. The, we don't want to build our lives on, on, on our modern culture or, or our, our culture that we experience. As long as that culture is aligned with the kingdom culture, then it's fine. But we need to understand that the things that we are exposed to are not always aligned with what God, God has for us and what His culture and what His standard is. And so many things that we look at, we look and we, we assume as truth, we assume as okay, we assume as um, something that we can build our lives on, but actually might not be. So we firstly need to know the Word to understand what the Word says and what, what we build our lives on. But we also have a gift of discernment that God has given us. Okay, so my big idea this morning is that we have the power to separate truth from lies. This will come in very, very handy, I'm assuming, when you have teenagers. I'm, I'm just assuming. So I don't have them yet, uh, but I, I really think that it will come in handy because I knew how I was as a teenager. So we have the power to separate truth from lies. So 1, uh, 1 John 2.20 says, you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. You have an anointing. What is an anointing? Anointing, another word that I like to use is the word empowerment. You have an empowerment from the Holy Spirit. You're empowered. The word says when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will receive power. So you're empowered from the Holy One and you know all things. Right? doesn't mean you know some things, you know all things. So this means that you, if you have the Holy Spirit and you're anointed by the Holy Spirit, you are able to differentiate and separate truth from lies. You know all things. Amen. You know all things. And I believe that this even transcends your ability to differentiate truth and lies, but allows you to, in, to operate at a level that you wouldn't be able to operate in just your own personal human intellect. Is that that you have an anointing that God gives you an ability to operate above and beyond what you can in and of yourself. So this, I love this scripture because I hold on to it, especially when I lose my car keys. And you love, but I, I, God is so concerned about the details of your life. He is so involved in the small details because if it's important to you, it's important to Him. Because He's a good Father. And so in the morning, when you're losing your head because you can't find your keys, and the kids are screaming, and, you know, the one child has the one shoe on, and the other doesn't have it, and they didn't pack their bag, and now you can't find your keys. It sounds funny. It sounds, sounds, sounds trivial. But the fact of the matter is, the truth is, is that I know all things. So I can ask the Holy Spirit to show me where the keys are. I'm like, and He does. Thank you. He does. Amen. Often, there's a lot of things. I mean, I've had experiences early on. Um, I mean, I, 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 there was something I'd lost, um, and it was really, really expensive. And I could not find it for weeks, for weeks. I'm talking about, I think I was a month, two months saved or something. I could not find it, and I was like, oh, my word, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't even know how I'm going to tell my parents because I was still living in the house. And um, I prayed, and I didn't even know what I was praying. I was like, just show me where it is. And I am not, I am not joking. I promise you, I woke up in the middle of the night and that thing was sitting on my chest. It was literally sitting on my chest. Now, 
I mean, I had overturned the bed. I'd looked everywhere. It, I woke up and I looked down at it. And I didn't know what I was really praying, but I knew that God could show me things that I didn't know. And what I'm trying to explain to you this morning is that God wants to and is very concerned about the details of your life. And He wants you to use the things that He's given you to enable you to walk in the fullness of your life. Okay, And so one of those things is the gift of discernment, right? But um, this word to know in the, in the Greek, Greek is the word edo, and it means to perceive, to see, or discern. So the word says that if you have the Holy Spirit, He gives you the power to perceive, to see, and to discern. You are able to see more things where you like to use it with your eyes closed and with your, with the, when they're open. We don't, live, we don't walk by faith or we don't walk by sight. We walk by faith, right? So there are many things that we see with our natural eyes that, is, that there's more to it. There's more than meets the eye. And so when we have the Holy Spirit, we're able to perceive and to see and to discern things that we can't net do it naturally. Amen. Now, where is the gift of discernment? The gift of discernment is found in 1 Corinthians 12, 1 to 10. I'm going to go through the whole, whole passage. It's the baseline passage this morning. And it really talks about the spiritual gifts. Now, right off the bat, I'm sure you know, but if you don't know, we are not, um, uh, uh, we are not of the belief that the Holy uh, Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit ceased with the apostles. Okay? We are not stationists. We are believers that we, as a church, we believe the Holy Spirit is still acting in, in the world today. And His gifts are still active. And they are available to you and to me. Right? And so 1 Corinthians 12, 1 to 10 starts to speak about these gifts that you and I have been given. And there are many of them. Most of us focus on one of them. Right? And it says here, now concerning spiritual gifts, this is uh, Apostle Paul speaking, I do not want you to be ignorant. The word ignorant means to lack knowledge. Okay? I don't want you to be ignorant of these things. You know that you, when you, that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols, however you were led. Therefore, I'm making known to you that, that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed. And no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are diversities of gifts but the same Spirit. Many gifts but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries but the same Lord. And these are, there are diversities of activities but it's the same God who works in all of them. So we see gifts, we see ministries, and we see activities. So there's a lot to do in the kingdom of God. There are gifts we operate in. There are ministries that you and I have or callings or destinies as we speak. And there are activities. There are actual things we do. But it's all from the same Lord and the same Spirit. But the manifestation of Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Here's one of the big things that we need to understand about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The gifts of the Holy Spirit can profit you, but they are not primarily for you and for me. They are primarily for everyone, or for, for the building up of the body of, of, of Christ, right? But it says the manifestation or the outworking of the Spirit is given to each one. And it means every single one of us has the ability to access one or more of those gifts, right? Now, it is the Holy Spirit to decide who gets those gifts, but I do believe that you and I can operate in each of them at various levels. Okay, either, and I've seen this, there are times where the gift of, the, of, the, of, the, of wisdom you will need, right? So it's either needed in your personal life and it's for a specific season or for a specific reason, or it's needed in the body of Christ for a specific reason or for a specific season, right? But each of us is given by the manifestation of the Holy Spirit gifts for the profit of all. See, a lot of times we'll find people operate in gifts of the Holy Spirit, but it's very focused on themselves. Okay, it's very focused on themselves. And I have no issues with, I mean, God, God is the one that decides at to which degree you operate in that gift. And God can put, your hand, can put His hand on you and make you... Uh, very proficient in their gift. But a lot of times it's made about, made about the person and not about what their gift does for the body. Okay? And how do we know that? Because if, you know, 
if you've been in, in kind of church circles for any amount of time, you'll probably, you know, run to some of these gifts and conferences and, and, and ministries, and there's nothing wrong with that. All I'm saying is that we must not forget that the primary reason that God gives us gifts is for the profit of all. Amen. You're with me this morning. All right, so now he starts to go on. He starts to say, okay, here are the different gifts. Now, to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. To another, the word of knowledge through the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To others, different kinds of tongues. And to others, the interpretation of tongues. So I've often struggled and wrestled with the, with the Scripture a little bit. Because there is a tendency for us to read that scripture and say, well, um, it's only for some that the gifts are given. Okay? Because it says to one and to another and to another. The problem I have with that, with that kind of logic is that there's two specific gifts here that are spoken about. The gift of faith. So it says to one is given the gift of faith. Right? So then it would assume that oh, you have a gift of faith and I have another gift, but I might not have the gift of faith. The problem with that is, is that the same word for faith in that scripture is the same word, used, the same word for faith used that you cannot please God without faith. So if I can't please God without faith, then I, I'm, I'm, I'm really up a creek with a paddle. I was going to use something else because then I cannot, uh, I need this gift of faith to please God, but it's given to somebody else. So how do I operate like that? Okay, so I've landed here that each of us will operate in one of these as a primary gift, as, as God allows us to. Gives, but you can access and operate in other, other of those gifts. So the gift of healing, you can operate in the gift of healing. You can operate in the gift of prophecy, and I'll show you why I say that now in the next few scriptures. And so the gift of the sermon that I want to just speak on this morning is one of those gifts that I do believe that is very needed for us as a church, individually and as a body, but it's often the one that is um, not uh, given uh, a lot of focus on and attention to. goes on to say, to the Spirit, to another faith, um, interpretation. So this word, discern, is diacrisis or diacrino or the, or the root, root word. It means to separate, to distinguish, and to make judgment. So what the word here is telling me is that you and I, God gives by the Holy Spirit. He disperses gifts of the Holy Spirit. Right? If, you are, if you've given your life to Christ, He starts to regenerate your spirit. When He anoints you, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you baptize the Holy Spirit, the word says you have been, been given power. Right, dunamis power, and along with that power, the expression of that is found in the gifts of the Spirit, these seven gifts. And one of those is the gift of discernment, or the discerning of spirits. And that word means that I have a gift that allows me to separate, allows me to distinguish, and allows me to make a judgment of the things that I see before me. It's very needed in the church because it speaks about discerning of spirits. That you can listen to something and you can discern by the Holy Spirit whether that thing is true or not. Here's a caveat. You still need to check that in the Word. Because some people will sit in a church service and will discern that it is incorrect. Okay? There's one thing if we are looking at the Word of God and it's, this is what we are preaching and we are saying that. There's another thing if I'm just making up stuff with no basis in Scripture. And so someone will say, oh, I, 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 you know, I discern that that was incorrect, but there's no basis for Scripture in to say that it was incorrect. What that means is that they just discern it didn't gel with their personal preference or how they would like it to be. Okay? It's a difference. God gives us the gift of discernment to separate truth from lies. But the word is truth. And so whenever we make a judgment call as to this is true or this is false, it must be backed up by Scripture. That's why we need to know the Scripture. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Where is the truth found? The truth is found in the word. Okay. And so what does the gift of discernment do? 
Well, it allows us to distinguish what is true and false. Right? And this is so, so applicable as a dovetail into our previous series, Wise Decisions. When you have to make a decision, this you need to lean into your gift of discernment. You must lean into what is God saying to you in that moment. Because a lot of times we are led by logic only. Okay, and I gave you that example. Sometimes we go all the way to one side and we are led by logic and mind only. And then we also go to this other side when we're only led by what we feel the Spirit is saying to us. Right? And you have to have both. We are to worship Him in mind, body, uh, not, yeah, mind and body and spirit. Right? So mind, right, and the Spirit and our activity. So we need to engage both. But we need to be able to distinguish what is true and false. The problem with lies, especially from the enemy, is that he changes one slight thing. Right? And the best lies always have elements of truth in it. So when the enemy goes to, 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 to Jesus and he starts to tempt him in the wilderness, what does he do? He starts to tempt him by changing the scripture slightly. And if you don't know the scripture and you don't know what the word says, you're going to be led astray. But you also need to be able to discern what is the motivation and the spirit behind it. Because there's a spirit behind everything we do. Amen. There's a spirit. You and I are spiritual beings having an earthly experience. We're not earthly beings having a spiritual experience. So God makes us in His, in His image. He is spirit. And so we are spirit bodies. And so behind every single thing that we the way we face or the thing that we deal with, there is a spirit behind that, right? And so we need to be able to distinguish the spirit behind what we are dealing with. So what is true and false and what is of the Holy Spirit and what is not of the Holy Spirit? What is of the Holy Spirit? And not all things that are not of the Holy Spirit are bad. See, there's a lot of good things that you and I can do. It's just not all of them are God things. How do I know the difference? Well, well, I need to be able to tap into the gift of discernment to know know what is the Holy Spirit and what is not of the Holy Spirit. I cannot be only led by my emotions. I cannot only be led by what is a good idea. How many people do you know that have started things that are good ideas? The one person does it and then you do it and it doesn't work at all. Why? Because it might, it might have been a good idea, but it might not have been a God idea for you. So you need to be able to develop the leading of the Holy Spirit. And one part of that is the discerning of the Spirit behind the thing. Right? And we often use, use this example because it's difficult to quantify what that looks like. Right? It's not a you know, five-step process. But we like to use the illustration of, right, the illustration of an antenna. You have a spiritual antenna, right, that you need to make very sensitive to what is going on around you. And so when you're dealing with someone and you're dealing with certain things, that you kind of let that antenna go out and try to pick up on the frequency. I know we're using some terminology, right, but pick up on a frequency, okay, so those of you that still listen to the radio, there's a radio station that sends out a frequency. And that frequency is always going. But if you are not tuned into that specific frequency, or if you're going through some, uh, some uh, obstacles that are going to disturb that frequency, you're not going to hear clearly. Okay. Is the freak, is this thing still going? Yes. They're still pinging out that signal. Now, the fact that you can't hear doesn't mean that they've stopped sending the signal out. No. So, bring it back into this this side of it. God is constantly speaking to you and to me. The fact that sometimes we cannot hear is not that the fact that He's not saying anything or He's quiet. It's probably most of the time that we're not tuned into the right frequency or we're allowing a lot of... uh, um, Static or interference, that's the word I'm looking for, interference to cloud that signal. Okay. And so we need to make sure that we are 
constantly tuned into what the Holy Spirit is saying. Holy Spirit is saying. Okay. Um, all right. I'm going to use a very quick example. Roxanne, please come up to the front. Don't worry. I'm not, I'm not going to embarrass you. Uh, Cheslin, come to the front, please, as well. Why don't you just stand right here? Cheslin, come stand right here. Okay. Um, uh, Willow, do you want to come stand here as well? Uh, you can turn around. Just turn around. Okay. And Lance, Lance, do you come, don't you want to just help me out? All right. So I want you guys to face that way. Don't peek, Roxanne. Look straight ahead. Okay. We're going to do an exercise, right? I'm going to ask, okay, it's Roxanne, right? I'm going to ask each one of you to just shout out Roxanne, okay? And Roxanne, you are now going to listen out for your true voice of your love, <laughs> your husband. Okay, we're putting, you know, we, we, we're putting things to the test here. And, you know, <laughs> and you're going to tell me which one is the one, all right? So I'm going to go one, two, three, and I'm going to tell you, okay, it's one, and then they're going to say your name, two, and three, and then, okay. So number one. Just tap it in there, all right? Okay. Then number two. And then number three. Oh, just, just shout it again. I don't think she heard you. Okay. Which one was your love? Number two. Turn around. Are you sure? Yay. All right. All right you guys can sit down. Thank you very much. Okay. Simple example. But the point is, she recognized the true voice. How did she do that? She spent time with him. It's very difficult to recognize somebody's voice if you don't spend time with them. Okay. It's very difficult to distinguish what is true and false when you don't spend time with what is true. It's very difficult to distinguish what is the Holy Spirit and what is not when you don't spend time with the Holy Spirit. So when we do our destiny groups, we do things like, hey guys, we're going to read this book. Okay. This book of the Bible we're going to read, and we're going to read it for 30 days. What are we doing? We're putting into habits of practices that enable us to spend time with God, that enable us to recognize His voice, okay? So if you don't make time for one another, right, if, if they can live in the ha same house and not speak to one another, they can live in the same house and not speak to one another, do you think that they're going to be able to recognize each other? Probably not after a while. And so the fact that you're in the same environment doesn't directly mean that you are able to recognize what the Holy Spirit is saying. You've got to spend time with Him, and you have to allow Him to speak to you. Why do I say Him? Because the Holy Spirit is not some cosmic force out there. The Holy Spirit is a person. He's a person. Okay, I'm not going to get into that this morning, but just to allow you. Okay, so gift of the sermon. I'm going to carry on a little bit next week, so, so this is not, not the, the whole, the whole I'm, I'm rounded off next week. But the gift of the sermon, how do we operate, number one, in the gift of the sermon? Number one, we have to desire the gift. God responds to desire. God responds to hunger. If you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you shall be filled. God fills those that desire after Him. The, it, it, is, it is not a... Um, you know, half effort pursuit. When you met Roxanne, it was not half effort. It was not half hearted pursuit. I would hope so. I hope you had to pursue her a little bit. You know, you had to work for her a little bit. You had to desire her, right? And in the process of time, as that the relationship grew, then there was a fruit of it. We desire the gift. A lot of people say, if it's God's will. No, He's already told you it's His will. Oh, if God wants me, no. He says, I already want to give it to you, but here's the thing. I want you to want it. I want you to desire it. God responds to our hunger and our desire for Him. Right? So 1 Corinthians 14, 1. This is, it goes Corinthians 12, which talks about the gifts of the Spirit. Then it's the marriage chapter, Corinthians 13. Actually, it was never about marriage, by the way. Okay? It was about how God operates in love. And then he says, Corinthians 14 now talks about what you are to do and, 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 and some instructions around some of the gifts. So he says, pursue love. Number one, pursue love because that is the highest pursuit that we have. 
faith operates by love. If love, if we don't have love in the way we operate, we're not going to operate in the fullness of what God has for us, right? So pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. If God didn't want us to desire spiritual gifts and He didn't w- want us to have the ability to walk in those things, why would Paul tell us to desire them? Speaking under the, ins- uh, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, right? We take it, it's God breathed. This is God, Him speaking to us. He says, desire the spiritual gifts. Why would He tell you to desire them if you are not able to access them? It doesn't make any sense. So He says, pursue love, number one. Desire spiritual gifts, but as, uh, gifts, but especially that you prophesy. Why would He tell me to desire the gift of prophecy if He only gives it to some people? See, this is why it's always confused me. This is why I've landed. You, as you know, if you've gone to Destiny Finder, you have a certain bent. God's hardwired you with a certain spiritual bent, a certain bent to some of the gifts. But it doesn't mean that you cannot operate in any of the other ones. It just you'll be more proficient in, in, in the main one. But you can desire gifts. And I, we have seen that in times where that gift is needed, or in times where you actually sit under a ministry where the gift is uh, most, most apparent, you will start to walk in that gift a little bit more, okay? Because you're in that environment. So it says we must pursue love and desire the gift. So you want to walk in discernment, you want to walk in wisdom, he says, well, I want you to desire it. I want you to crave it. I want you to want it more than your biggest, you know, indulgent, guilty pleasure. Whether that's your chocolate or whatever it is that you love, that, you know, it's, it's that little thing that you crave and you need more of. God says, I want you to crave it and desire it more. Okay? So he says, pursue it. Then, second thing is, we ask the Father for the gift. You ask for it. It doesn't just necessarily come on you. You ask for it, right? Every time we, we what is prayer? It's asking God. You have not because you Ask not. So we don't operate in gift of discernment. Who has ever in their previous time asked God to give them the gift of discernment? Okay, well done. Two, three, excellent. Okay, triple dose, okay? So you ask for it. Maybe the reason why some of us don't operate in some of the gifts is because we haven't asked for them. Right? And so we've got to ask the Father for the gift. It says here, of, of John 15, 7, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be given to you. Okay? It doesn't say God will give you what you desire. It says if you abide in me. So the assumption is, is that you're building your life on His word. You're building your life on His principle and His truth. And when you do that, God responds in kind because you ask according to His word. And it said it shall be given to you. So all of a sudden I see... Paul says, desire it, and I can operate in it. And here it says, if I desire it and I ask for it, he will give it to me. James 1.5, once again, one of the gifts of, of the Spirit, the gift of wisdom, the gift of word of wisdom was one of those. And it says in James 1.5, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, reproach and it will be given to you. Once again, I ask If I'm not able to walk in that wisdom, I'm not able to access that gift, why would then James encourage me to ask for it? Right? I need it. Thank you. I need it. But if I was never able to have it, then why would he tell me that I should ask for it? What I'm trying to convey to you this morning is that there are things available to us through the Holy Spirit that we are either ignorant of, that we don't know about, or we are not asking for. We don't know that it's available to us. And here we see three different gifts that the, that in three different spaces that we are encouraged to desire, ask for, that are part of those seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Which means if those are three are available, then all of them are. Right? So I have to do what? I have to desire the gift and I have to ask it. How do you ask? You don't pray and fast for five hours. You ask God, God, please, I thank you that I have, the, the, have access to the gift of the sermon. So I'm asking you right now to anoint me, to empower me with the gift of the Spirit. And you said that if I abide in you and ask for it, it shall be done in your name. Amen. 
and now all of a sudden it's matrix mode. God plugs the cable into your head and you just get woof, discernment. No, you have a gift. Now you need to stir the gift up. We, it's not automatic. Everything God gives you, gives you a gift. And He says, I've given you a gift. Now you've got to work that gift. Now you have to stir that gift. Now you have to put that gift to the test. You have to exercise that gift. Right? Gifts are potential. It's not the full-fledged thing. So you've got to work at that thing. You've got to try it out. You've got to test it out. And you need to learn how God speaks to you in your context. Because He doesn't speak to me in the same way He speaks to you. Right? And we can talk about, you know, how God speaks to us, whether He speaks to us through a word, whether He speaks to us through a vision, through a knowing, through a nudging. God can speak to us through dreams as well. Right? That, that's something between God. But we can't, I can't tell you what that is. I can help you and guide you in discerning what that is, but that is a personal relationship. We are not robots and we're not cookie cutter Christians. We're not all the same. God wants a personal relationship with you. That's why He often asks you to seek Him out and search Him out. Because He doesn't want robots. Right? And so we need to desire the gift, ask the gift, or ask the Father for the gift, and stir up the gift. 2 Timothy 1 6 says, Therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying of hands. Okay? The gift that is in you, stir it up, agitate it. Do something with it. Don't allow it to be idle. Because the only person that suffers when we don't use the gift that God has given us is us. And by extension, the world that God has called us to impact and to reach. And if you are able to discern things in your life, you're able to discern, you know, for your own good, but you're also able to discern things in other people's lives. Guess what you're doing? You're making an impact. You're being missional. You're able to say to someone, hey, man, I, I, I don't know about that thing, hey. I'm, I, 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 don't, I don't think that's the right way to go. I don't think that's the right step to do. Maybe just check this thing and check that thing out. God's given you that gift for the profit of all, not for the profit of self. And so when you start to operate in the sermon, and by the way, the more you use it for other people, the more generous you are, as Lisa said, the more, ge- the more you water others, the more you will be watered. The more you use that gift to discern with others, the more you'll have the ability to discern for yourself. Amen. So I want to encourage you, and we're going to pray. And I'm just going to pray over you this morning. I'm not going to call you out, but right there in your seat, we're going to pray, and we're going to ask. And if you're someone that wants the uh, Holy Spirit, we're going to ask, the, 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 oh, not the Holy Spirit, but the gift of the sermon. We're going to ask that God give you the gift of the sermon this morning. Amen. Amen. So let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning for your word. Thank you, Lord, that your word is truth. We thank you, Lord, that your word is alive. We thank you that, you, God, we can look to your word and we can know that it is truth. We can look at things in our lives and we can look at things in the world and we can have a plumb line, we can have a standard. And you said that we are to build exactly. As you encouraged Moses to build the tabernacle, you said build it exactly. So this morning, we want to be people that are accurate. We want to be people that build exactly as what you say. Are we going to get it right every time? No. That's why we're so thankful for your grace. That when we do mess up and we get it wrong, your grace is sufficient. But we want to be people that were intentional in pursuit of you and the gift. So Lord, you said this morning, you said in your word, You said in your word that you are able to have the gift of discernment, able to have the gift of wisdom and of prophecy and healing and and words of knowledge. And so this morning, Father God, we ask as we desire and we know that the gift is profitable to us and profitable to others, we ask that you will give that gift to us. So if you're sitting this morning, just close your eyes, bow your head. And if you're sitting in this morning and say, look, I, I want the gift of the sermon this morning. Just where you're sitting, just lift your hand. Just lift your hand. I want to know who I'm praying for. And I want to pray for you specifically. Lord, I ask right now in the name of Jesus. You see the hands that are raised this morning. So, Lord, I thank you that we desire this gift and that you respond to this, uh, that desire. So, ask right now in the mighty name of Jesus that you activate and you put on your people the gift of discernment. 
the gift to be able to distinguish between truth and lies, between the Holy Spirit and evil spirits, that they can look at every single situation and say, this is what the truth is. I can look through the fog, look through the, through the clutter and say, this is the truth of the matter, and I can be led of you. So I ask you for that in the mighty name of Jesus and all of God's people said, amen, amen. Here's the thing, you receive it by grace through faith, by grace through faith. You've got to believe that you receive it and you operate it in gra- by grace. So I want to encourage you to go and pray and as you need to make a decision, lean in and say, what, what is that unction? What am I sensing now? And then test that thing. Move in that direction and then, but don't make it like a huge life decision, okay? But just test it with smaller things and say, this is what I think the thing is. Okay, I'm sensing that. I went in that direction. Okay, that was truth, and this is how it felt. This is what I sensed. This is what God was saying to me. Now I know the next time I can recognize the same thing. And also recognize when you're wrong. Okay, uh, this is how I felt. This, okay, that wasn't the right thing. Then I know for next time. Amen.